basically oh it's very messy गोफन मुतले क्या जम के पाच काल जो गो इंसान है तू सा प्राणी आशी जम सातन काहे घर के शेर मन शेर उड में टाइम है वक्त चार गो पास टाइम है इस वक्त अच्छा 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 जम हुई आज ओसा का अच्छा ओसम ओसम रोजन ओ वाह 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 सातन वरियन आक प्रेन वरियन बचे मदस अच्छा तू तो छु आते रोज में हां तू तो छु रोज में आते ओ वाह वाह इससे बात समझ अच्छा अच्छा ओके थे ना होके दान ने ब्रेक करने से अच्छा 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 ओके होके होके ओके इस वजह का कबायल हमलस में अच्छा अच्छा कबायल हमलस में एक से दो स्पोट गए अच्छा बहुत गए ओ वाह बहुत गए अच्छा 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 तो योर का नो तुम सोस ना रमहन हां तो का जान हम सो तो सोस में पापू सोस योर का नहीं बात समझ तो सातन वेरे ने अच्छा अच्छा पर तले पात बोल के जे बोन ते मुत तोर बेम तोर सेवन अच्छा अच्छा तोर बेम ताजा दिन के यम साथ काहे कर से असी तो फिर तान पे चाहत है टाइम में वक्त तो वक्त है क्यों वे से तो यो स्कोर पेंट तो सारी चीज यो बंदर का अच्छा आज तो थस खास नावन ये आलम आ बो पातस खास ना आज नावन काइटनेस काइटनेस ये जो बुरर पेट अच्छा बुरर पेट बुरर पेट अजे दन दन से गासना से इस्लाम बाद का चान या शहर का चान टाइम में बा दोस्ता हम जो टाइम में ब्रोंच तो तो मैं याद है ये कुछ आ प्रिय नहीं आज प्राण को परिचन के अर्चन के अर्चन के आज कुछ ना सर आज कुछ We know many things about the people who were living here. 
One important thing about these people were that they were agro-pastoralist people. So they were basically living here for a certain period of time and they were practicing agriculture. Domesticated, uh, they were domesticating animals and they were domesticating plants as well. Now the important aspect is they were not eating rice some 5000 years before present. So what was a stable crop then? We know that they were cultivating or they were domesticating wheat and barley. We have no evidence of any millet from this side. So as you see, we have rice fields behind us, but this is the late entry to Kashmir Valley. So these people, you know, the Neolithic people at Gufkral, they were cultivating wheat and barley. So the next thing is, which is, which is millet. Wheat and barley is a staple diet or is a crop or is a domesticated variant, which was first domesticated in Western Asia. And then millet is another crop which was domesticated in East Eastern Asia. We didn't have any evidences of millet from this side, but then we have evidences of wheat and barley. So what these people were doing, they were doing this agriculture, they were harvesting this stuff, and then they were, you know, making pits under the ground here at the site. So we call them as storage pits or, you know, the, or, or the greeneries. So some people have mentioned them as deviling pits, which is a wrong notion to say. So what they were doing, they were storing that stuff in those pits, sealing those pits and then going to different place. So spending six months at, you know, a different place and coming back to here in the next season, they were opening those pits and, you know, utilizing that stuff which they harvested, you know, last year. So yeah, very, you know, an innovative thing to do at, during that period. So uh, an important analogy to it is our Gujar and Bakalwar right now. So for the whole year, for the six months, they come to summer pastures in Srinagar and during the winters, they go back to, you know, the, uh, the Jammu or where the, it's warmer, you know, climate. So possibly these people were doing the same thing. So during one season, they were staying at Gupkral for the next season at Burzuhum and for the, you know, maybe going to Swat as well, because Swat is what, like I mean, say they have the similar material culture as Swat. So to understand these people, I mean, say these are dots which we need to connect. So, Narshal may ye kahenge ya is kashir patan mano it patan ke yem chus sun jad sun ajad. Asha sa chinsi paidaish. We can use the research ka sancha throughout world. Taman hun thrust, taman hun focus, we can gook ral to burzuhum. Asha, we can us, mala particularly, I'm involved in a couple of projects with uh, University of Sydney or with, uh, with universities in England as well and a couple of universities in Russia as well. But all the people, Sari look, yam nibri universities and mazan tamchi yasan sirip gizanun ki yus yuhun zirat us, ya yuhun lasun basun us, ya yuhun rosen karun zikit patin us. Kaz ashin yaman hai parallel zimelan. Be yasash ak unique metri culture ak yusasa yet us pansa swari bro. So this is another cave. Uh, you can see the another home here. So we are basically exploring the cave houses in uh, Tral. That's very ancient. Uh, the area is called Mir, or locally they call it Gofkral. The po the pot makers they used to live here. So they have sort of preserved them. You can see this is this was the house. So uh, we are presently in uh, the cave 
which is uh, locally known as Gruff Goff, or uh, this is uh, called Goff Kraals as a cave. They used to be live here in this cave. We are in one of one of one of the cave caves. It is uh, as uh, they said, it's around five thousand old old cave. So uh, these caves are not uh, used. Uh, right now, but they have uh, maintained it a uh, little bit. So we are uh, in one of the cave presently, as you can see, nothing is 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 basically visible. It's complete dark behind behind us. So there's a slight light coming from from the uh, entra entrance, and this is used to be as a home for for them. बाबा चे अथमन जाम च तिमसा जे खानदार वानदार कुरम अथमन सो जे बसन तेथ में शूर ते जमी ते अथमन जाय ये महाराज के मई क्राल कम करम बाकी नस कि We are right now at uh, Gufkral. This is a Gufkral archaeological site and it's protected by Archaeological Survey of India. The site is basically a Neolithic one. We call this a Neolithic uh, you know, site. It dates, to, it dates back to 5000 years before present. So it, this Gufkral is a very, very important site to understand the history of Kashmir. So the monuments you are seeing basically behind me are called as manhires. So this basically depicts a culture which is associated to these Neolithic people. So this, when this site was excavated by uh, A.K. Sharma and K.D. Banerjee in 1982, it was excavated in two seasons. So they basically stayed here. It was uh, earlier they came to learn, know about the Neolithic culture from, uh, from Burzuhum. And later on, somebody, you know, gave the, you know, it was during a survey. So this site came, came to prominence and then ASI started to excavate the site. So this site has three phases. Number one is aceramic. Aceramic is when there was no pottery. So which is very important to understand what these people were doing. So the next phase was ceramic Neolithic. It was again, so first phase was aceramic Neolithic it means Neolithic without pottery. Second phase is ceramic Neolithic means Neolithic with pottery. So when this pot, the people started to make pot, pots and you know, uh, you know stuff and cook their meals. In, in fact, they were cooking their meals during the aceramic phase as well. But then this pottery will know is basically coming from phase second. And the first phase third was megalithic. So these stones, basically these manhires, they belong to phase third, megalithic phase. So this Gufkral is in is 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 way too important to understand the history of Kashmir. So we have only two Neolithic sites which have been excavated in Kashmir Valley. Number one is Burzuhum and number second is Gufkral. And if you want to see the parallels of this Neolithic culture, then you have to go to the Swat Valley. So if you want to see parallels of this uh, you know, culture, Neolithic culture, so then you have to go to the Swat Valley in Pakistan. So there at Swat Valley, you see many, many sites like Ali Grama, Bir Kod Gondai, uh, you know, these are Galige, these are the sites where the similar material culture has been reported. But the thing is, we are earlier. So our dates are earlier. So the first phase when the, the site was ex being excavated and when the site was dated, so the earliest dates we have from this site is around 3000 BC. So the dates for the aceramic and we have a well established aceramic, uh, you know, this date sequence, uh, date sequence from Kashmir Valley. It was only in 1999 that, uh, we, you know, one of, one of the prominent archaeologists from India, he was stationed here, uh, B.R. Mani. 
he was stationed here and then he excavated Kanispur which is another uh, Neolithic site but that was excavated in a very short season again two seasons two, two material culture you know uh, two cultural sequences were reported there a ceramic Neolithic and ceramic Neolithic but Gufkral has you know it has given us earliest dates for the iron uh, iron in South Asia so if you want to understand when we started to have these iron tools with us so these stone tools these man hires these megalithics are you know in parallel to the earliest iron dates reported from from this site so basically it was a megalithic phase from where we are getting the iron age tools from this site so and the earliest dates as well Okay, we are still at Gupkral. Uh, <clears throat> we are now uh, 100 meters away from the archaeological site we're early talking about. And uh, one of the important things about the Gupkral is when I was talking about that there were there are three phases: as ceramic, ceramic, and megalithic. So the ceramic Neolithic is very important in itself because we, for the first time, we have pottery with us. Now this is one of the classic examples. So at, for instance, at Burzuhum, either Burzuhum Neolithic or Gupkara Neolithic, we have four types of pottery. Number one, coarse ware. Number second, fine ware. Number third, burn sheet ware. Number fourth, gritty red ware. 
So the gritty red wear comes with the megalithic, the huge stones. But the earliest wear we have at Gufkral is coarse wear. So this is this is fine wear. This is not coarse wear. So there is um, no associated uh, you know sand fillers to this material. But then like these are the pottery pieces which I collected from the uh, you know the from Gufkral archaeological site. So you can see this is fine wear. But the important aspect of this fine wear is that it has mad impressed base. So this is not replicated right now. Like I mean say they do manufacture pots. There is still continuity of that Neolithic, of ceramic Neolithic here during these present times. But like I mean say styles have changed, uh, you know everything has changed or even the motorized this, uh, this stuff wheel has changed. Now it's all mechanical. So earlier you know when we were talk we we were talking about this uh, uh, gufkral uh, you know ceramic phase the coarse wear was hand drawn so there wasn't any you know mechanized mechanized way or i would say manually there was no wheel at that time so what you know what was a mechanism there were a couple of you know things they used to do they used to make coils of this earth and then they used to wind those coils on top of each other and give it a shape of a pot and then they used to get a wet cloth and then you know uh, make you know just just, just to you know uh, just wet it on outside give, give, give it a very smooth finish and you have a pot so it was it was it was a second when we, they were manufacturing or they were doing these uh, burn shed wear pots so we have the early con you know concept of wheel manual wheel whatever you say it like i mean say this one which is which you have to you know rotate by hand so this is uh, you know they you know the, the, this this came into vogue during the burn wear phase of the neolithic but you know before uh, during the coarse wear phase or the fine wear phase so the pottery was you know hand drawn i mean say no concept of of wheel or anything at that point of time so which is like i mean say this is this is very unique and this is very I mean, say it's nostalgic to see when I'm talking. I'm talking to you. I'm I'm talking about a Gufkral site which dates back to 5,000 years before present, and this is the pottery which is 5,000 years before present. And then you see the people still in the same profession after 5,000 years before present, and doing the same stuff here, making this pottery. I mean, say it is apt time for we people to you know like uh, you know to aware people everywhere i mean say how important this this cultural the cultural uh, the thing is important to we people as well i mean say we need to preserve it we need to encourage them as well and we need to you know open these people or open these parts to the international you know markets or domestic markets as well because this is this is our culture this is what who we are this is this is our identity this is our you know invention discovery whatever you call it I'm saying this is we, uh, what we are. Ah, very shy. Pretty good. Kind of good. You see, you see, you see, you see, Yes, of course, I'm going to say, 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 yes, of course, I'